Yeah, everybody knows it came out that the idiot Supreme Court, uh, indeed that draft opinion was in fact the opinion to overturn Roe v. Wade. Of course, it, it could have been worse in that it could have just basically criminalized abortion all across the country. But instead what has happened is the mess that happened pre-Roe is going to, with the different states legalizing it and other states not legalizing it, is going to be in place. And of course, <coughs> I think people are, the, the anti-abortion nut jobs that make up about 30% of the population, they're going to be in for a rude awakening when they realize women are not going to go back to the 1950s and be little homemakers and housewives. But what the Supreme Court really is saying, the majority, these Federalist Society hacks, almost to a person, they're Federalist Society hacks. What they're really saying is women don't have the constitutional right to say no to men. That you're just a thing to fuck and a thing to have children. And that is your career. So all this stuff about yammering, well... I mean, yes, all this thing about gender identity and all that mess about that, it's going to be kind of meaningless in a lot of the country because women are just going to be saddled at home and they're not going to be out in the world anyway. So why do they need separate restrooms? Why do they need sports? Why do they need any of this when they're pregnant all the time? And, of course, a lot of this recent hysteria about Roe v. Wade is about trying to get that white birth rate up. But they're, they're in for a rude awakening. I think women are just going to say, to hell with men. And they're just going to live their lives the way they want. Going to be interesting how this falls out. Uh, but, that's what it, but that's what the Supreme Court basically said. There is no constitutional right for women to say no to men. That if that man wants to get his dick in your body, that's his right. Because you're a thing to be used. That's basically, that's what you are. Let's face it. And I, I had to laugh at some of the comments at Democratic Underground. And they, they, they said, well, it's going to go back to the days when women had limited opportunities and they were making less money. They're still making less money. What the fuck are you talking about? A handful of women that are allowed to have high-paying jobs and stuff doesn't change the fact that women are penalized in the labor force in order to coerce them into marriage. So the, the uh, Dr. James Dobson's and his ilk, his evangelical ilk, they're jubilant over this because they think that's going to put men back in charge of the home because they were losing control of women. But I think <laughs> they're going to be in for a rude awakening. The only thing is, I'm not sure it's going to make a big difference in the, in the midterms. I think the GOP is counting on voters being madder than hell over gas prices and inflation. I think that's going to weigh way more heavily than this crap that's been anticipated. And... In my state, Oregon, of course, abortion will remain legal. It'll remain legal in Washington. It'll remain legal in California. It'll remain legal in Nevada. Probably Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, you know, the far west. And then, of course, a big portion of the eastern seaboard will also have legal abortion, too. But the great expanse in between, and including the, the deep south, it's going to be contentious. But women will get it. You know, they'll get them. And that's the way it is. And then what happens? What happens if the white birth rate doesn't go up? What, or the birth rate at all? What happens then? Are we going to restrict women's access to education? Are we going to restrict their access to the right to vote? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And old Thomas, I think he had a concurring opinion or something. He wants... He wants uh, the uh, Obergefell, or whatever that decision, that looked at. And Griswold, 
You know, because there's no constitutional right to privacy, right? Women have no right to say no, right? Except, of course, uh, Loving versus Virginia, as some wag pointed out. Because uh, Clarence Thomas is a direct, uh, direct uh, beneficiary of that ruling. Of course, that was interracial marriage back in 1967 when that, dis when that was decided. But there's all of that. So, um, yeah, Mike Pitts. It says here, today life won. No, life, this is not about, we don't get, they don't give a shit about the fetus. This is about women going back into the home and cooking and cleaning for men and fucking them. Uh, whatever the man wants, or not fucking them, the man, the man fucking them and fucking them over whenever the man wants. And I say, thank God, you know, I'm past that age now. I can thank God I'm past that age where I even have to worry about this stuff. Because let me tell you, even living in areas where abortion laws are liberalized, it's, it's, you have to constantly worry about pregnancy and all this shit anytime you deal with men unless they're older men and usually they have vasectomies or often they do so you don't deal with that and but men think they've men think they've won this this is mostly an MRA thing they and they think they've won the day they may have won this little battle but they've lost the war and they lost the war a long time ago but I would love it if um, if women voted in the polls in mass to uh, throw Republicans out. But I suspect it's the gas prices are what are going to carry the day. And of course, we know or should know that's all price gouging. That's not Putin, and that's not the supply chain. Chain. It's <clears throat> the uh, the deliberate price manipulation by the elites in order to create a political outcome. And then once the elections are over, gas prices are going to tumble. We know that. But these nitwits, uh, they're going to realize women aren't going back to being little mothers and homemakers. They're, they aren't. And all that bullshit. They aren't going to do that anymore. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'll link to this. It's probably under a fucking paywall. The New York Times and the Washington Post and all those can't get their act together um, about anything. So, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, it was expected that they were going to do it. They waited till the end of their summer term or whatever, or the end of this session, before they take off for the 4th of July, leave Dodge. They probably are long gone, these the majority, but uh, we've got a problem here with a vetting group called, and it's not the American Bar Association, but the Federalist Society, where they're handpicking these damn uh, hacks for the high court. We've got a real problem here. They should have no say in that. And anyway, so... That is the end of that today. I got other things that I am going to do today, I guess. Because the weather's going to start getting hot up here. Anyway, that's it.